So uh, I'm just going to move to the next topic, which how do we treat how do we treat a cancer once it's established? And in the past, uh, we had two options: we could operate on esophagus cancer, or give chemotherapy and radiation by itself, or uh, followed by surgery. So now, how you get treated depends on whose office you walk into first. And uh, this isn't the case at Sloan Kettering, but if you've got gastric cancer in the community, surgeons see the patient first, and they usually operate. So you've got to have this out tomorrow. You've got to get your surgery. Uh, and this actually is probably not the best thing to do. It's probably better that you get preoperative treatment. But in the community, if you've got gastric cancer, the surgeons usually see the patient first. They do surgery first, and then they send the patient to the oncologist after the surgery to get treatment. Uh, also, many surgeries are done in low volume centers where the surgeon just doesn't have a lot of experience. And they often don't do an adequate surgery. They don't take enough lymph nodes out. Now, fortunately, esophagus cancer, uh, most surgeons agree that you got to do more than surgery, that you, can't, you shouldn't just operate tomorrow, that patients do better if they get other treatment, chemotherapy, radiation, which we'll talk about. Chemotherapy and radiation before surgery is the most common approach in the United States. And uh, our thoracic surgery colleagues, for the most part, will refer patients for treatment before uh, surgery is done. So uh, why was chemotherapy and radiation shown to be helpful? Uh, well, this was a study done, uh, it's over 20 years ago now. Uh, this was uh, RTOG, this is a cooperative group that I'm involved with, uh, the Radiation Therapy Oncology Group. And they did a very simple trial in esophagus squamous cancer. They compared radiation therapy by itself, just giving radiation, versus chemotherapy and radiation together. And what they found was people that got chemotherapy and radiation did better. There was a survival benefit, clear survival benefit for chemotherapy and radiation. Actually, if you do radiation alone, nobody survived long term. So, so this, this study was landmark because it showed you could cure patients with esophagus squamous cancers with chemotherapy and radiation alone. Um, and this established a standard of care at that time. Chemotherapy and radiation is a curative treatment even without surgery. Now, the worry is about half of patients could recur locally even if you do chemoradiation. So the surgeons would argue you have to operate here uh, rather than just watch patients after chemotherapy and radiation. So what about surgery as a primary treatment? Well, these are large surgical series from Japan. Remember, there's a lot of esophageal squamous cancer in Japan. And this is data from the Netherlands. Uh, unfortunately, with surgery alone, at best, we're only going to cure about 40% of patients with surgery by itself. And the same thing, for, this is for squamous cancers. For adenocarcinoma also, surgery alone, only about a 40% cure rate. So obviously, we want to do better than this. We want to improve this outcome. And that's where the addition of chemotherapy and radiation uh, come into play. So for esophagus cancer, we use a, a classification called the Seward classification. Here's the esophagus. Here's the stomach. Most of the tumors that we're seeing now are in the junction between the esophagus and the stomach. And uh, we classify Seward 1, which are tumors in the lower esophagus. Seward 2, those are the GE junction tumors. And Seward 3 are stomach tumors invading the esophagus. So for tumors of the esophagus and the GE junction, we usually treat them like esophagus cancer. And as I'll show you, um, uh, chemotherapy and radiation is probably the most uh, useful way to treat these patients uh, before uh, surgery. Now, this is a key test. Uh, if you have been treated for esophagus cancer, you've had endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, this is a technique that allows us to stage the tumor. Like, uh, if somebody has a stage one tumor, or early stage, we don't want to subject that patient to chemotherapy, radiation, other treatments. So we do an endoscopic ultrasound. And this is the uh, esophagus wall. This is the ultrasound probe. And what the ultrasound does, it, it very nicely tells us, see this tumor here, it's invading all the layers of the esophagus. So this is not a stage one tumor. This is a, what we call T3. It's going through the wall of the esophagus. And you can see lymph nodes here, node positive. So what endoscopic ultrasound can tell us, what if you've got a T1 tumor? What if it's just very superficially invading? Then you probably should just get surgery alone. Uh, unfortunately, we don't see very many T1 tumors. We don't screen for this cancer. So may, most patients, the endoscopic ultrasound looks like this. We see T3, which is the tumor penetrating all the layers of the esophagus. That's stage two. If we add lymph nodes, it becomes stage three. 
So most patients are going to be candidates for doing more than surgery, but this test allows us to identify stage 1 patients, T1, that might be uh, candidates for surgery uh, alone. And actually, if you're really, your tumor is really superficial, what's called a T1A, they can actually take it out with the endoscope. Just go and take the endoscope and cut it out. But as I said, that's only 5% of patients. Unfortunately, most patients present with more advanced stage disease, so we need to add other treatments uh, in addition to surgery. So what about PET scan? Uh, this is a very important staging tool. 95% uh, of patients' esophageal tumors do light up with PET scan. Um, occasionally we get a surprise with a PET scan. We find more disease than we expect. So it does allow us to make sure that the cancer is confined and localized uh, before we uh, start doing preoperative uh, treatment. So this is, just a, here's, this is just a patient image. And you see this dark area. That's, that's how an uh, esophagus tumor looks on a PET scan. Uh, what a PET scan is, it's a, it's a glucose scan. And uh, cancers metabolize glucose a lot faster than normal tissue, so it lights up on a PET scan. And this was a patient that actually got chemotherapy and the tumor almost disappeared. So the PET scan showed a nice response uh, to the chemotherapy. So why give treatment before surgery? Uh, well, uh, this has really become the standard not only for esophagus but also gastric cancer. It really allows us to make sure the treatment's working. You know, we can really assess the tumor while it's in place to make sure the chemo's working. Obviously, patients are going to tolerate treatment a lot better before surgery than after going through a bigger operation. And we're getting, we're getting chemotherapy in from day one. We're trying to eliminate recurrences. So we're trying to treat that, uh, you know, if there's cells that escaped already, we're trying to treat them and eliminate them from day one. Preoperative treatment also has the advantage of downstaging the tumor, making it uh, a lower stage, and enhancing the surgeon's ability to operate. So uh, preoperative treatment has really become the standard in this disease. So even though there is some controversy remaining, Again, uh, for a stage uh, two or three esophagus cancer, T3 or node positive, we argue we need to do something more than surgery alone. Surgery alone is just not enough. Although some European studies did suggest that chemotherapy by itself before surgery improved outcome, uh, there's a British study that showed about a 13% improvement in survival, a French study 14%. However, bigger studies uh, showed no benefit. Uh, trials focusing specifically on esophagus and G-junction tumors pretty much failed. A British study, 800 patients, there was only a 6% improvement in outcome. A big American trial of chemo alone, 450 patients, no better than surgery alone. And a recent European study also using platinum 5-FU. Chemo alone did not work. So the results of chemotherapy as a preoperative treatment have been inconsistent and I would argue the bigger trials have really not shown a benefit. So why do we combine chemotherapy and radiation? Well, I showed you that for squamous cancer, it's curative by itself. You maybe don't even need surgery. So chemotherapy and radiation, you get complete remissions in up to 40% of patients. That is, you go to surgery and there's no cancer left. Uh, survivorship is 35% uh, or greater in long-term follow-up. The problem is the early studies uh, uh, comparing this to surgery alone did not show a clear benefit. So what about pooled analysis of studies? What if we pool the st studies together? So if we look at the results of eight chemotherapy trials in 1,700 patients, we do get a little benefit, a mortality reduction of 10% and about a 7% improvement in survival. But if you combine chemotherapy and radiation, you get a 20% reduction in mortality and a doubling of the survival benefit. So the pooled analysis does suggest that chemoradiation gives you a better survival improvement compared to chemotherapy alone. So now we have this study from Germany. This was a trial recently conducted in Germany uh, that compared head-to-head -head in esophagus cancer, chemo alone or chemotherapy plus radiation. So these patients got about four months of chemo alone with platinum 5-FU, or this is the approach actually we do at Sloan Kettering, chemo first, then chemo radiation, and then surgery. Uh, this trial was very carefully conducted. Only adenocarcinomas were put in the study. Remember I told you endoscopic ultrasound is key to have the correct stage. So everybody on this 
uh, trial had endoscopic ultrasound. They had to have advanced tumors, T3, T4. They even did laparoscopy. So these were carefully staged patients. They didn't have early stage disease. They all had more advanced stage tumors. Uh, and the ability to operate, that is get a negative margin at surgery, was the same for chemo versus chemo radiation, about 70%. Uh, but many more patients were complete responders. Uh, T0, N0, that means no cancer left at surgery. Only 2% for chemo alone, 16% for chemo radiation. And if you look at patients that were converted to lymph node negative status, 65% were node negative compared to only 35% that got chemo. So chemo radiation achieved more complete responses and made more patients lymph node negative. Uh, and these are very important factors that help uh, patients uh, achieve a long-term cure. And here, boy, RMB sure looks better here. These are survival curves. Chemo radiation, you had a 20% greater chance of surviving with chemo radiation compared to chemo alone. So uh, this p-value almost reaches significance, but this is a significant difference in survival for patients getting combined treatment, almost a 50% long-term compared to only 30% getting chemotherapy. Also about 18, 18 to 20 percent of patients, much less local recurrences. Local recurrence is less common if you got chemotherapy and radiation compared to chemo alone. So this study suggests better chance of long-term survival, better chance of local uh, control of the cancer if you get chemotherapy and radiation followed by surgery compared to uh, chemotherapy alone. So now uh, we have a big study from the Netherlands. Uh, we've been waiting for this trial because it's hard to do studies in the United States uh, in a rare disease. Uh, the Netherlands, are ver they're very organized. They, they do great clinical studies. And this was a four-center trial in the Netherlands where they compared. They said, we've got to answer the question. So we'll get half of the patients on this trial with esophagus cancer will only get surgery, and half will get chemotherapy and radiation followed by surgery. Uh, now, another thing that's important about this study is it uses a modern chemotherapy, you know, because the older studies used a cocktail called 5-FU and cisplatinum, which is very toxic. It's very difficult to administer. So this used Taxol and Carboplatinum. This is very similar to the regimen we use, Arinatecan and cisplatinum. That's modern chemotherapy. So weekly chemotherapy with Taxol and Carboplatinum combined with radiation followed by surgery versus surgery alone. This trial also, everybody had an endoscopic ultrasound. Uh, the vast majority, 75% were stage three. 75% had adenocarcinoma. And this carbotaxel radiation was pretty tolerable. Only about a quarter of the patients had grade three or four toxic effects. And if you look at the ability to operate after the chemotherapy and radiation, 90% of patients had a successful surgery compared to only 67% that had surgery alone. So, Chemotherapy and radiation improved the ability to operate by nearly 25%. And again, uh, almost 30% of patients, there was no cancer remaining uh, at surgery. And this was a strongly positive trial. Chemotherapy and radiation, you have a much better chance of cure compared to surgery alone. And actually, the average difference in survival time was two years. That's a huge difference in a cancer trial. So this trial, I think, sets a new standard in the United States. Carboplatinum taxol radiation, easy to administer, significantly better than surgery alone. Uh, so I think the debate is over. You know, do we have to agonize what's better, chemo or chemo radiation? Chemo radiation is the better, the better treatment here, and it improves out, it improves out, it improves outcome for patients. This just showed that all subgroups benefited. Uh, for some, very few women were treated on the trial. For some women, for some reason, women on this study did not get a benefit. I, I, I can't explain this. I think it's just small numbers. But if you're on the left side of this curve, it means you had a benefit. If you're on the right side of the curve, it means chemo radiation did not help you. And you can see that pretty much all the subgroups benefited. Adenocarcinoma, squamous cancers, if you were lymph node negative or lymph node positive, and overall, the, uh, you had a benefit if you got chemotherapy and radiation compared to surgery uh, by itself. So this brings me back to my earlier slide that it's not so controversial anymore. All of us agree that something more than surgery alone should be done. Uh, although there's some data to suggest a benefit for chemotherapy, I think the, the recent studies suggest that chemotherapy and radiation gives you the best chance at a cure. Uh, 
Uh, it is more toxic, but uh, if you're dealing with a curable disease, I think I would opt for more, more side effects and get the more aggressive therapy. Now that's for adenocarcinoma. Squamous cancer of the esophagus, uh, uh, chemo alone I would not do. Chemotherapy and radiation already was an accepted treatment 20 years ago. You don't always have to operate with squamous cancers. If patients achieve a complete response, uh, we sometimes can watch patients and never have to do surgery. So how do patients do after chemotherapy and radiation? Well, the best group to be in is the, that, that complete remission group. If you're in that complete remission group, you have less than a uh, usually less than a 30% chance of recurring. Uh, and uh, if you have mostly scar tissue left, 90% treatment effect, you do well. You do well if you're lymph node negative at the time of surgery uh, and if you have an earlier stage of the tumor compared to more advanced stage at uh, surgery. And now we've got evidence, uh, this is going to lead to a national trial that we're going to be leading next year, uh, uh, looking at PET scan. If you get a PET scan early on in your treatment and your PET scan improves, that's a sign that you're going to do much better. And what we're going to do in the future is use the PET scan. Uh, we're actually already doing this in some cases that if you don't respond well on the PET scan, you change the treatment. And what we've seen is we can convert patients to long-term cure even if they're not responding to the first line of treatment. PET scan is a critical test here. So what about the role of surgery? Uh, we do tend to operate in most patients with adenocarcinoma, there's a low rate of complete, lower rate of complete response with adenocarcinoma. Uh, surgery is considered for most patients. Occasionally, if patients are older and we give chemoradiation first, we might consider deferring or delaying surgery. Squamous cancers, on the other hand, a much higher rate of complete remission with chemotherapy and radiation alone. So because of this, for squamous cancers, we don't always mandate surgery. And more often than not, we can avoid an operation in squamous cancers by giving patients chemotherapy and radiation alone. Uh, we published a series of uh, octogenarian patients that we treated with chemotherapy and radiation. Uh, actually, the oldest patient I've ever treated with chemotherapy and radiation was 89, and he still comes to see me in clinic at 94. We just saw him a couple of months ago. So age does not prevent you from treating patients with esophagus cancer. Um, this was a group of 25 patients we treated over five years. Uh, their age range was 77 to 88. Most of these patients had medical problems, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. We gave these patients chemotherapy and radiation and we really couldn't operate because they just weren't medically well enough. Uh, and 75% uh, of patients achieved a clean endoscopy after treatment. So we cleared the local tumor in about three quarters of patients. And at three years, a little bit less than half of patients were still free of disease. But I'm really proud of this. Three of the seven patients we treated over the age of 80 are fine. They, we, we cured them without surgery. So, so we showed in this study we could treat older patients with medical problems with chemotherapy and radiation alone. And uh, we just have, to be, just have to be careful. So how do we identify who the patients are that are complete responses? Well, the, we really look at endoscopy. Uh, if the endoscopy looks normal, if the biopsies become negative, uh, this was a study from Sloan Kettering in 137 patients getting chemoradiation and then an endoscopy, a biopsy, and then surgery. And again, about three quarters of patients did have a negative endoscopy after treatment. The problem is only about half of them actually had no cancer. So endoscopy is really, you know, it's, it's, it tells us about half of the patients are cancer free. But we still, you know, we're not 100% sure. Uh, negative endoscopy is not 100% accurate, although for squamous cancers it was much more accurate. If you had a negative endoscopy with a squamous cancer, you were more likely were to have cure, that you had a complete remission. 